I'm Max Hayes. I'm a BS in computer science and digital audio major. I got into my 3D audio specialization project. Um, in my junior year game project, I decided to write a custom audio engine for Unreal. So I was kind of replacing Epic's audio engine with my own little simple one for academic purposes. And then the next semester in another one of Dr. Clausen's labs, we actually had a guest speaker, Ethan Geller, who's a programmer at Epic, come in and show us how to write spatialization plugins and use their environment. So audio spatialization is the goal of taking a sound and altering it for the left and right ear independently to convince the brain that they're hearing the sound coming from a certain point in space. Um, projectiles and things whizzing by your head will, would normally just be an asset that's meant to sound that way, a sound effect someone's made to get that whiz sound, uh, but this is actually doing it procedurally. So how I landed the internship at Epic, I actually happened to run into um, Aaron McLaren, the lead audio programmer at Epic, just by happenstance at a, at a conference that DigiPen hosted last summer. And um, uh, someone introduced me to him because they knew I was writing my own audio engine for Unreal. And he said, that's really cool. Uh, that's how I got my job. Have you looked at the cool stuff we're doing? And I said, no, not at all. So uh, how's it feel learning Unreal and student projects to actually getting to to, to work on, on the engine itself is wild. And a couple, the months when I knew I had the internship coming up, uh, it was really exciting. And it's that cool phase of your academic career where you get to tell people what you're doing next. And then the reality sets in of like, oh, in 14 days, I actually have to go. DigiPen actually prepared me really well. Like I would consider myself an average programmer at DigiPen, but I would get comments like, it's nice that we don't have to hold your hand on, you know, the programming side of things. Um, so that made me feel really good. And then in general, it's such a cool opportunity to be able to work to work on the engine um, that you almost want to suppress that like how crazy it is because you it's you want to seem like you belong there, right? You want to just be be on brand. But there's three or four times a day where I just kind of zoom out and look around. And it's like I can't actually believe I'm in this room with these people. So the wavetable synth was one of my first really big multi-week projects. Uh, of the internship, and that was kind of, hopefully it would be something cool we could show at GDC, which we did. Wavetable synthesis in general is um, is a type of synthesis where the source of audio are these tiny little snippets of audio, basically, that the user has some control over. So in the, the wavetable synth I wrote for Unreal, it leverages the curve editor that's already in Unreal Engine. So uh, the user can literally draw any kind of crazy shape they want in a curve and that little snippet of audio will be converted to like a, a, a small buffer. That's, that's literally the shape that the speakers are gonna make when it's played back. Wavetable synthesis is useful in games, just uh, synthesis in general is useful in games because normally you would be making uh, assets and just static sound effects, sound files that sound the same every time you play them back, and you have a pretty limited toolkit with how you can make those uh, respond dynamically to what might be going on in the game. You get pitch shift and filters and other sound effects. But to have a synthesizer running in the game, you can get really tight integration between what your user, what your player might be doing, which is unpredictable, uh, and, and the sound that they're hearing. So instead of a sound designer sitting at his computer using a synthesizer to make a sound and then putting that sound in the game, you can literally have your game tell the synthesizer what to do. So if, you, if your user has control over the throttle of a spaceship, uh, instead of trying to fake that with a couple static assets or something like that, you can actually have a synthesizer being multiple parameters of the synth synthesizer being driven uh, by what the user is doing. Having the wavetable synth actually be demoed at, at GDC was a really cool experience. Uh, I didn't even really expect it because throughout my school career and, and even during the internship, it feels like I'm there to learn. So I'm, every step of the way is, is a little bit um, not selfish, but like tunnel vision, right? This is this is for me to learn something new. Um, so having the Wavetable Synth debut and uh, get shown off in the talk, and and actually we had it at the audio booth so people could come and, and play with it with MIDI controllers and knobs and stuff like that. That was kind of this aha moment for me where I f it was my first taste of going from I'm learning stuff for myself to I've contributed now. This is something that I get to see people excited about, and that was that was really cool.